changing the air filter is very simple. New cars today, you've got lines of code. It's time for Drive With Me TV. This is Drive With Me TV. With your host, Dave Jigster. So get behind the wheel with me, Dave Jigster, for Drive With Me TV. Hi, I'm Dave Jigster from 97 Rock. Welcome to Drive With Me TV, Western New York's only automotive television show. On this edition, popular weatherman Don Paul is in the driver's seat with my friend Don DeShulo. Meet the car care coach, Lauren Fix. Find out what's under the hood with Pete Dahmer. Go inside Collision Masters because you've got a guy with Frank Todaro. And take a test drive with one of the most popular vehicles sold in Buffalo. So let's get rolling with our friend, Don Paul. I'm Paul. This is an amazing a moment because we're driving with you and we're uh, now pulling out of the lot. Don, what are you driving? I am driving a, a 2018 leased Honda Accord EXL with the two liter engine, which is the first, this is the first year where they stopped using the six. And they had about the best V6 out there. And I, I've been leasing Hondas and I had the V6, which was magnificent. And I was kind of reluctant, but I knew I was, if I'm staying with Honda, I'm gonna have to settle for the four. And the four is just as fast, not quite as quiet. And this has a 10-speed automatic transmission, which you can drive from the little old lady style up to Madman style. Oh my gosh, look at Don Paul. Like Mario Andretti. Watch that speedometer. Right? Watch the, watch, wait, watch the state yeah, police. Yeah, it, it's a fast car. I don't typically drive like that. So you're driving a Honda. Yes. Why the Honda over and above another vehicle? Because it seems like you're a Honda kind of guy. Well, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is relative cheapness, <laughs> me and the car. So are you saying, Don, you like a, you like a car that has a lot of, well, economic, uh, economic punch? Yes, because this car uh, is loaded in the ways that no BMW without the options packages is. It has virtually everything you want, plus all the safety features, the uh, automatic emergency braking, and and the lane, I definitely need the lane assistance staying in lane. I had a very serious incident with my previous Accord. I, I got the option that's now standard called Honda Sensing. And I joked with the sales guy, um, I, I may not need this now, but I could easily need it by the time the lease is up because I'm getting older. And um, I had, I was coming down with a cold. I still worked at Channel 4 back then and I had lunch with a former Channel 4 employee, which was a common status sure. back then, former Channel 4. <laughs> and I had loads of coffee, and I took an over-the-counter cold medication that I'd taken a thousand times before, and I'm on the 290 to get to Delaware Avenue, and I'm so sleepy, and uh, I'm forcing my, you know, kind of shaking my head, and I turned and went on to Delaware, cut over to Elmwood to get to Channel 4. And, um, I'm driving down Elmwood with my cruise control on, set at 35, because Kenmore, as we well know, is well patrolled yes. by the Kenmore Very Police strange. Department. Well, the next thing I knew, my brakes were slamming on, and uh, I had fallen asleep at the wheel. And uh, some poor individual in front of me would have had a 35 mile an hour rear end collision, which would have resulted in serious yeah. whiplash injuries for him. And uh, it would have been a major accident. A 35 mile an hour impact is a, is a major impact mechanically and a, a real threat. And that system saved me. And I don't remember ever falling asleep like that. Maybe it's happened some other time in my life. But I, I the next time I saw the sales guy, I said, boy, did that system pay for itself. It's standard on Hondas now, or all the Accords, but there are some very expensive luxury cars where they're still making it part of a package. It's not standard, and everyone it will become standard in every car because I think Congress is already uh, going to legislate that because that kind of system can save your life. Now, I'm not saying I would have been killed, but what about the poor 
guy in front of sure. me. Sure. Wow, that's a serious uh, story, Don. I don't think anybody, yeah. anybody would so, expect that. Um, you know, it's nannyism. People say, I, I want to do my own driving. Well, I still enjoy driving, but I like knowing that if my sensory systems and my brain start to fail, there's a safety net. Uh, so I, I really recommend that. The safety feature saved your life, and that maybe of another driver in West New York. Yeah, or at least kept that other driver from being badly injured. Yeah. And um, I, I really like knowing that's there. And, uh, the, you know, the, it has radar, which watches the cars in front of you. And if it snows too hard, it actually gives me a warning. Your radar is obscured. Do not rely on it. So anywhere yeah. you go, Don <laughs> Paul, West New York's weatherman, the radar is with him. That's right. I can't, I can't car. pull you over for speeding, though. No. It, doesn't, it doesn't trace your speed. No, but even the weather radar yeah. is here following <laughs> Don. Well, safe travels, Don, and thanks for driving with me. I'm Dave Jixer. Time to keep you updated with the latest news and information from the dashboard. Here's an interesting fact. Did you know that women buy more new cars than men? Let's tell that to the moneylenders at Ally Financial. A recent report coming out of their Detroit headquarters showed that profits are flat due to declining new car business and that GM and Chrysler sales are down nearly 30%. But used car sales and lease numbers are up. Get this, Ally reports an 11% increase in that category, totaling $1 billion for the third quarter of 2018 compared to $900 million the year before. Ally is one of the largest auto lenders in the United States. Attention parents, the AAA tells us that teens driving with other teens in the car are more likely to be involved in a fatal collision. That's up over 50% than if the teen was driving solo. Add night driving and speed into the mix, and those stats could go even higher. What can be done to prevent teens in risky situations? The AAA says teens should drive at least 100 hours with a parent before driving alone and not allowing more than one teen as a passenger for at least six months. One popular car with drivers of all ages is the Mazda CX-5. A company memo posted by Reddit and picked up by Motor Trend confirms that the newest version of the CX-5 will have a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder revving you up with over 300 pounds of torque. Look for new models branded as Grand Touring Reserve and Signature with all-wheel drive and other dashboard features like Apple CarPlay and other technological features to name a few. So who watching has $13 million to spend on a car? Hmm, I see a few hands raised. Well, I don't, but if you do, then you want to check out this ride from Rolls-Royce. Now, despite the price tag on that new Rolls, our crack team at Drive With Me TV found that 80% of millionaires actually drive used cars. That's right, used cars, which might explain why they are millionaires. Did you know your car spends 95% of its life art? That it takes about 25 hours to build a car with 10 of those hours spent on painting the vehicle. Did you know what the best-selling car of all time is? We'll find out after this brief break on Drive With Me TV. Welcome back to Drive With Me TV. I'm Dave Jixter. So here is the answer to our dashboard question. Do you know what the best-selling car of all time is the Toyota Corolla. Our guest this week is Lauren Fix, the car coach. She's nationally recognized automotive expert, media guest, journalist, author, keynote speaker, and television host. 
Lauren's appearances include Oprah, Good Morning America, The View, Today, 2020, The Early Show, CNN, Fox News, mm -hmm. and now Drive With Me TV. To say she's busy is an understatement of the year. We are lucky to have her here. Welcome, Lauren Fix. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. This is fun. Did you ever think cars would be as high tech as they are today? I mean, you. No. It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. The, the average car has about 200 microprocessors, and you're looking at new cars today. You're looking at lines of code. You're now looking at not a car, but a computer. So if you're into, you know, IT and computer, that's the growth area. And they're not hiring mechanics turning wrenches anymore. They're hiring people that can connect up a computer to the onboard diagnostics, read the codes, figure out what's wrong, taking information from manufacturers and fixing it. So now they're called technicians. Yeah, they're not no called more mechanics. They're no. technicians. Right. So what mechanics are people that are restoring cars essentially. They're, those of us are still left. <laughs> They're the guys that, or girls that yeah. are replacing clutches. Yeah. So what kind of schooling do you need? I mean, is, is there a, a big calling for oh, technicians now? Huge shortage right now in diesel tech. If you think you're looking for a career, you really don't want to go to college, or maybe you went to college, it wasn't your thing. Diesel technicians, huge. There's a signing bonus for them. They can't even find them because they're all older guys and they want more people doing that. Uh, also, we're looking for um, service writers, parts people. There's just a huge shortage. Even on the marketing side, uh, auto sales, there's a shortage uh, totally in the auto industry. So you don't have to go to school. Uh, I have a four-year degree, but you don't necessarily need that. Um, if I'm shopping for a car right now, mm -hmm. And I live in Buffalo year round, winter, yes. summer, fall, mm -hmm. spring. And let's say I, I, I can only afford one car under $25,000. What would Ooh. you suggest someone to buy in this area? Well, it depends. Do you have a family? Do you want a pickup truck? I and mean, there's a lot of variables. But one of the things I think some factors you need, never cheap out on safety. Because you can always add cool wheels or an awesome radio or satellite XM or a sunroof or whatever. You cannot add safety. So safety and all-wheel drive are like the most important features. All-wheel drive, I would say, with, with the winters. And I use snow tires. Not everybody does. And I've been in Buffalo, like I said, most of my life from Detroit. You had a, we used to run studded tires, which are illegal now. They say stone tires are coming back, though. Yes, winter tires, they're calling them. They're not calling them okay. snow tires any longer. Mechanic, technician, yeah, snow tires, winter tires. Yeah, okay. but it's still the same thing. So those are important. Now, you're looking at cars. There's a lot of great product, whether you want domestic or import. There's, do you want a Korean brand, a Japanese brand, a German brand? You can now get into most vehicles. Even Mercedes, you can get into under 30000 now. So when you think, oh, it's got to be a, a Chevy or a Ford, that's a personal choice. So I always say number one rule is sit in the vehicle. Seating comfort is number one. It will never get more comfortable. Visibility is extremely important. And then you get into the safety features and all the goodies and things that you want, but you should always look at the things you need like safety. Lauren Fix, the car coach. We are so happy to have her on this program. Thank and you. thank you so much. I could talk to you for hours about this. Well, let me know. We'll talk cars again. Awesome. <laughs> this is Drive With Me TV. Frank Todaro, nice to meet you. Same here. Thank I'm with did. Frank Todaro, owner and CEO of Collision Masters. And Frank, you've been in the collision business your entire life. I have, yes I have. Uh, Since you were? Two days old out of the hospital, my father took me to a shop, uh, friends of his, and he was so proud of me and showing me off, and I was already huffing the fumes. So your father, father got you in the collision business when you were two days old, two days and old. you've been in the collision business ever since? Well, I went to Lancaster High School, graduated in 97, then uh, two weeks prior to graduation, uh, my father got ill, and I got right into the business and took care of it. So Frank, with all your collision experience, you yeah. decided to open up Collision Masters about 12 years ago? I did, yeah, uh, right on uh, 555 Pearl Street. So you have that business, and you have the business that we're at now. What's the address here? This one here is 290 South Park. We're located right behind the downtown casino, and uh, we're only nine months new here, and we're doing really well. How is Collision Masters different than any other collision shop? With the years around? of experience, I've actually done a layout in this shop that's really efficient where customers will come into a drive through they're out of the elements, the cold, the rain, and they drop off their car, they get into a rental car. I mean, look at this place. It's, it's fantastic. It, it looks like a place that any moment, Ross Salvatore is going to come around the corner and, <laughs> and make you a steak. <laughs> You also have great customer service. You make it hassle-free for people that might be a little annoyed if they just got into a wreck and they don't have a vehicle to drive. And yeah. your, your staff right. make it hassle-free. Yeah, that? look, we, we realize that you're already in a bad predicament. You got in an accident or somebody hit you. No one plans them. That's why they're accidents. We want you to come in. We want to sign, sign you up. We have your authorizations all set with your insurance company. We're, we work with all the insurance companies and get you on, on your day with your life. From welders to 
Uh, we have all the uh, mechanical, and we also have new uh, alignment machines, tire machines. It's a one-stop shop. Frank, what kind of warranty comes with your auto repair work? Every vehicle that we repair, we provide a lifetime warranty. As long as you own your vehicle, we handle it for you. How long does a repair generally take here at Collision Masters? On average, uh, a, a, a standard repair, it, it really differs on the amount of damage. So what we want to do is take the vehicle apart, and then within 24 hours, we're going to contact the customer and let them know exactly what kind of parts we're going to use and how long the process will take. And while we're doing that, we're going to also ask the customer if they would like us to text them, email them, or call them on a daily basis and give them an update. Yeah. Now, if I get into a fender bender and have to drop my vehicle off here or my vehicle gets towed here, do you have loaner cars available for customers? Yeah, if you don't have rental car coverage, we have Hertz rent a car on location. We can provide a loaner car at no charge to you. That's one of our policies here. Now, let's face it, nobody likes paperwork, waiting for the mail. We do everything electronically. Once we get a signature and authorization, we take it from there. We're going to handle all the funds, the uh, paperwork, the phone calls with the insurance company, their adjusters, and uh, we'll just give it progress. Organization is the key to success in the collision business, correct? It's a very key factor in what we do here every day. So right here is where we store all our parts carts. And here's one vehicle, a 2016 Honda CRV. All the original parts that come off that vehicle get notated, cataloged, and stored on the cart. So when the new parts come in, we gave that vehicle to a technician with the original cart and all the new parts. A car just got brought in here and needs, uh, needs some collision work. And you yes. bring it, you just brought it into this bay here. What's yes. gonna happen? So this is our pre-wash bay. What happens here is while a customer is filling out the needed paperwork, We'll ask for the keys and we'll bring it in this bay, pre-wash, and then we'll mark up the car and verify the damages with the customer prior to them leaving in a rental car. All right, Frank, now we are in your frame shop here in your facility, and here right. is a car that obviously is getting some work done to it. So this vehicle was on our frame machine. We did all the pre-pulling, measured everything, and then we bring it into this bay here where we have, now we weld up the quarter panel, the tail light pocket, we, we make sure the rear bumper cover fits. Everything gets pre-fitted before it gets welded. And then from here, it will go to the paint department. We're in front of these sophisticated looking paint booths. A lot of yes. buttons back there. Yes. So what we have here is GFS Company. They're based out of Wisconsin. What it is, is it's a controlled environment. Uh, same as when a vehicle's being uh, uh, produced in a factory. We bake all the finishes, just like the manufacturers require. Uh, we have minimal dust in, in there in the paint itself, so we gotta have these to produce. So we're painting about 16 cars, sometimes up to 20 a day. Frank Todaro, thank you so much for the time today. Two right locations, ahead. the addresses of each location again, please? Sir. 290 South Park is where we're located right now, and then 555 Pearl Street. And phone numbers for each location? 848-4800 for here, 855-2886 for Pearl Street. Got a great memory. And you can always Google Collision Masters on the web. Anytime. Okay, Frank Todaro, if you get into a fender bender, you need some collision work done, Collision Masters, Frank Todaro, I got a guy. fixing your car or like most people need some help along the way, our friend Pete Dahmer can help as we take you under the hood. I'm Pete with PRD Performance and this is Under the Hood. Today we'll be teaching you how to change your air filter. All cars are different so consult your owner's manual. Now let's get under the hood. So today we're changing this air filter because the car is at about 25,000 miles. Changing an air filter is very simple, it's something you can do in your garage. It usually comprises of going to the air box, taking off these two clips. You might have three or four, but it's the same concept. Just go in like this and you'll take out your air filter. So mileage isn't the only reason why you would change out your air filter. Poor gas mileage, check engine lights, they're all reasons why you would change it out. Today, it's because of mileage. We're at the interval of about 15 to 30,000 miles. So, to change it out and replace it, you just take it out of the box, and it's as simple as putting it back in the way it came out. 
you just slide it in there, redo these two clips, and you're all set. It's as simple as that. I'm Pete with PRD Performance. Thanks for watching Drive With Me TV. See you next time. The cold and snow has arrived here in Buffalo. I'm with uh, Dean Jackson, general manager here at Keller Chevrolet. Thanks for uh, thanks for stepping outside here in the cold. Anytime, my friend. So now we have a uh, what? A 2009 uh, 2019 Equinox. Yep. Yeah. How's it in the snow? It's terrific in the snow. Either front wheel drive or all wheel drive, whatever you prefer. It's fantastic in the snow. Driving an SUV in the, in Buffalo, I think, is important because they just handle better in the snow, and you're higher up, and it just it just gets you places you need to go quicker. It's a no-brainer, my friend. All right, let's give it a ride. Okay. How is the gas mileage on this thing? It's extremely economical. Extremely, 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 extremely economical. Majority of the equinoxes, depending whether you go front wheel drive or all wheel drive, are roughly about 30 miles per gallon. Oh wow, it's excellent. It's a quiet ride. It is, and this year's version, the 19 version, has a 1.5 liter turbo motor in it as a standard as standard equipment. And you'll find out, especially when you step on the throughway there, it's got uh, it's extremely responsive. The ride's very smooth, and obviously because it is four-wheel drive SUV, this has got to be great in the snow. It's terrific in the snow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great as a front-wheel drive, but the four-wheel drive is, is absolutely, you know, and not a must in Buffalo, but it's certainly one of our biggest sellers. Now, I was always an SUV guy, right? Ba basically because we live in Buffalo and we, we can't have some pretty bad winters. And obviously, there are some great cars that handle good in the snow, but SUVs are higher up and they handle better than any car would in the snow. And and it should, you're better prepared for winter driving an SUV. No doubt, and, and that's why the manufacturers, uh, you know, Chevrolet and Ford, have, are getting away from the car line a little bit because the affordability of an SUV. It's, you know, you can virtually buy an SUV for the same price as, as a car these days. And these are comfortable, roomy, and, and, and SUVs drive like a car. They're great. It's not like you feel like you're in this big, huge vehicle that's guzzling up all this gas. It seems like you're in a car, but you are higher up, and they definitely they definitely are safer than a car. Yeah, and this model, which is our most popular model, the Equinox is our most popular car because of its affordability, its safety. It has everything going for it. All right, Dean, I need to ask, um, does the radio work? Radio works. But not only does the radio work, there's a ton of technology that goes into the 2019 Equinox. Um, it has Wi-Fi, Apple CarPlay, Android Audio, uh, the phone OnStar, button. phone, yeah, I mean, virtually these cars do everything these days. So you, you could run your office out of the car if you needed to. You know, everything's hands-free driving. Um, you do have Wi-Fi in the car. Uh, most new vehicles, I'm assuming, do have come with cameras. So you, if, if you put this thing in reverse, the backup camera will come on. Absolutely. It's crystal clear. You know, they've had, again, a handful of years of technology to perfect that. And uh, I, don't know how we, I don't know how we drove without a backup camera. I know. It's just so funny with the technology. And the seats, too. You know, these seats are so comfortable, but they feel almost like, um, like a NASCAR racing seat. They, they feel like they, they form to your body. They do. They have to have a little firmness to them because they don't want, you know, you don't want to show wear and tear in a couple of years. So they've got a nice, they've got a nice stability around you. So they, so they look good and feel good, you know, not only now, but three, four, five, six years down the road. Great job, buddy. I think uh, Dean covered everything like a, like a champ here. That's it for this edition of Drive With Me TV, Western New York's only automotive television show. Tell us what you think. Join the conversation at WBBZ-TV on Facebook and at WBBZ on Twitter. Thanks for watching on air and online.